Happy May 4th everyone! The Tales of the Empire series is finally here, a so-called successor to Tales of the Jedi that aims to show the perspective of the bad guys. Tales of the Empire didn't resonate with me nearly as much as Tales of the Jedi though, because of a few reasons. I was practically uninterested in Morgan Elsbeth's story, but the story of Barris, whom we haven't seen on screen for about 10 years, topped with Inquisitors and Darth Vader, seemed like a big deal. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out exactly as many would have wanted. The series begins with Morgan's story during the Battle of Death also known as the Massacre of the Night Sisters. General Grievous leads an army of droids and basically annihilates the Night Sisters clan. He then engages in combat with one of the witches who turns out to be Morgan's mother. Using the tactics with which he killed the Jedi Padawan in the Clone Wars series, Grievous kills her, meaning that Morgan is forced to flee. She unsuccessfully hides from the commando droid, then fights and destroys it, but then falls unconscious. After the battle, Morgan is found by another witch clan, the Mountain Clan, which for some reason was not affected by the slaughter. They appear more pacifist and at first I didn't even realize they were witches too. Some clan members, including the leader's daughter, understandably worry about their safety, but the leader believes that they are safe. Then a group of three witches, led by Morgan, decides to go into the woods and take some weapons, just in case, and to their surprise, they fall into a droid ambush. The main witch arrives, uses magic to create a powerful explosion and destroys the droids. Unfortunately, two witches die, including the clan leader's daughter. The main witch which tells Morgan that a sad fate awaits her and leaves. The second episode begins with a time jump. Morgan, now a magistrate of Corvus, presents the design of a new TIE fighter to Imperial Moths, which features shields capable of reducing casualties among pilots. However, since it's the Empire, economic efficiency takes priority over the soldiers' lives, so Morgan's idea is rejected. Imperial officers are more interested in the planet, whose resources allow for such technologies to be created. Morgan is then approached by Gilad Pelian who expresses interest in Morgan's idea, explaining that his leadership is seeking people with such a vision. Morgan returns to Corvus, where she is met by an irritated crowd. It turns out Morgan promised them riches for cooperating with the Empire, but since the design of the new TIE fighters was refused, riches are not forthcoming. Later that day Morgan is attacked by a guy from the Rebels, whom she defeats. Then Pallion appears and explains that it was a test. Then Admiral Thrawn comes up and expresses admiration for Morgan's abilities and says that he greenlights her TIE Defender project, while asking why she seeks Imperial favor. And here come the writing flaws. Morgan replies that besides power, she wants revenge. Revenge on who? Grievous is already dead, and battle droids are deactivated. The only one she can seek revenge on is Palpatine, but no one, including Morgan, knows that he secretly controlled the Separatists, so why does she still want to join the Empire? She came to pitch her idea and was told that they would occupy her planet instead of offering her a job. It doesn't seem very friendly to me. Fortunately, Admiral Thrawn has shown himself to be more far-sighted, and now it's clear why Morgan is so devoted to him in the Ahsoka series. The third episode starts with yet another time jump. An ambassador from the New Republic, who turns out to be a former settler, arrives on the planet to spread democracy. The ambassador, accompanied by soldiers, approaches Morgan and does the most New Republic thing ever, which is ordering Morgan to surrender and go to prison. Such a stunning proposal receives a predictable reaction, during which all the soldiers of the New Republic are killed by Morgan's droids and the ambassador receives fatal injuries from the explosion of her ship. One of the settlers runs up to the dying ambassador, who hands him a comlink with a distress signal, while giving a motivational speech on how he can save everyone. The guy hesitates and Morgan destroys the comlink and also orders the droids to burn the forest around the city. By the way, when the ambassador sent the distress signal, Bo-Katan responded to it, as can be seen during the final credits. It's unclear why a Mandalorian would respond to a distress signal from the ambassador of the New Republic, but it's a cool easter egg. Next up are the Barris episodes. Barris, serving a life sentence for terrorism, feels Order 66 in her sleep rushes to the window and sees the Jedi Temple burning. Not understanding anything, she asks the clones guarding her cell what's happening and they reply, be glad you are no longer a Jedi. Sometime later, the fourth sister, familiar to us from the Kenobi series, enters her cell and offers Barris to join them. A very fitting role for Barris, considering her motivation in the past. The scene then switches to the planet Nur, where an Inquisitorium building is being constructed. The Grand Inquisitor briefs everyone and we meet two other former Jedi who have been 
been given the opportunity to serve the Empire. After a while, one of the apprentices intends to escape. Later we find out that the attempt was unsuccessful and that the guy paid for his failure with his life. The Grand Inquisitor begins to train Barris, while the second guy is assigned to the fourth sister. The main goal is to teach them to fight as users of the dark side, not as Jedi. Barris successfully channels her anger and impresses the Grand Inquisitor. Next comes the final test. Both candidates must fight to the death, as there is only one spot among the Jedi Hunters. Barris emerges victorious and becomes the new Inquisitor, receiving a beautiful new armor. The next scene was probably the most anticipated one. New Imperial assets are to meet their new master. Darth Vader menacingly appears, sits in a chair and that's basically it. In other words, there are no more scenes with Vader apart from those we saw in the trailer, which to me is just outrageous and ridiculous and unfair, because everyone was waiting to see how Vader would react to seeing Barris. Many even thought he would kill her immediately. I personally wasn't anticipating something like this, but it would have been great if they somehow hinted that Vader recognized Barris, though I'm more concerned with the lack of new scenes. Next, Barris and the fourth sister set off on a mission to eliminate a Jedi. While the fourth sister interrogates the villagers, Barris learns Jedi's location from a child. The fourth sister, enraged by the villagers' lies, activates her lightsaber and kills every villager before leaving. This shocks Barris, but she silently continues to follow her colleague. In the end, they find the Jedi, and just as Barris convinces him to surrender, the fourth sister backstabs him with her lightsaber. This becomes the last straw for Barris, and she betrays the fourth sister, pushing her off a cliff. The last episode takes place after a long time, as Barris has visited aged and become a hermit healer somewhere on the edge of the galaxy. A family with a force-sensitive child hunted by the Empire comes to her. Barris senses the approach of the enemy and orders her assistants to take the family and fly to safety on her ship, where they will be met and helped by an old friend. Who could this friend be? I have no idea. Maybe it's Ahsoka? Write your guesses in the comments. It turns out the fourth sister was following the family. She engages in a fight with Barris, who easily dodges all the attacks. Meanwhile, the family enters a cave where a space ship is hidden. Barris advises the Inquisitor not to follow the family into the cave because she won't be able to find a way out. But the Inquisitor persists, doesn't listen and goes in. The family finds the ship and safely flies away, while the fourth sister unsuccessfully wanders around the cave. She gets lost and starts angrily hitting the walls with her lightsaber. Behind her appears Barris, who wants to help her, but the Inquisitor impales her with her lightsaber. Barris tells the Inquisitor that she forgives her. Then there is some metaphor about leaving the Empire, they hold hands and Barris stops breathing. The sister carries Barris's body outside. End of the episode. It turned out to be a very strange story. During the Clone Wars, Barris blew up the Jedi Temple and killed a bunch of people. She then tried to frame her best friend Ahsoka, resulting in more deaths. Barris becomes an Inquisitor of the Empire, a role that suits her perfectly, because during her trial she confessed that she didn't like the Jedi, that's why she blew up the Temple. Then she has a sudden change of mind because of her aggressive accomplice and betrays the Empire, and then becomes a doctor and helps people. What? Many will say that this is character development, but I disagree with you, this is just some nonsense. I also didn't get why the series is called Tales of the Empire. Nothing new regarding the Empire was established. Morgan Elsbeth doesn't really have anything to do with the Empire. If not for Throne, the Empire would have rejected her. We also didn't learn anything particularly new about the Inquisitors. For example, they could have shown how Vader trains them, or how he punishes them for failure, or how they search for the remaining Jedi. Yes, we kind of saw how they recruited Jedi, but it is such a tiny bit. I just can't shake the feeling that Disney overpromised and underdelivered. Write your opinion in the comments and may the fourth be with you. Long live the Empire!